I am such a sucker for the horror genre. I was browsing the eShop the other day, looking at the new releases. I see this little game called Infernium. I was like, okay, this icon looks interesting. Let's, uh, let's take a look at what this game's all about. And the moment I saw a first-person survival horror game, I just immediately went, first-person survival horror game. I gotta play it. I gotta play it. So all of my time since reviewing Atelier Liddy and Suelle has been spent in this hellish landscape, running from all of these enemies that are effectively floating beach towels. No, I'm not kidding. If you check the Steam discussions, the developer himself lists cosplay of these enemies and links to a beach towel. Now, all jokes aside, let's dive into this new horror game and see how good it is. Here is my review of Infernium for the Nintendo Switch. Story is a bit hard to describe in Infernium, and that's because of how it starts and how it shows you its story. You seemingly wake up in this hellish realm known as Infernium, not knowing who you are, what you're doing there. You just go and explore and are chased by all of these apparitions that seem to be guarding various areas of this world. And mystery is the big theme of Infernium. You do get a story, but it's not through cutscenes. As you explore various areas of Infernium, you find all of these records about a group of friends written on the walls. And as you go through each area, you slowly put the pieces together. But even by the end game, there's still a lot of mystery. Are you one of these friends, or are you just some tortured soul that ended up in Infernium for whatever reason? And this is the part of the story that I absolutely love, because you have all of these little lore aspects. And every time I got to a puzzle that was so frustrating, I kept coming back because I kept wanting more of that lore. I wanted the next piece of the puzzle. I wanted to know every piece of backstory that the game would give me. Infernium is described or advertised as a first person survival horror game. And that's mostly accurate. But after playing through the game, I would say it's more like a first person puzzle horror video game. You have all these areas you can explore. But getting through each area isn't a matter of just surviving. It's more a matter of stealthily getting past enemies and solving puzzles to open up paths to the next area. While it is true that a lot of horror games in the past have used puzzles, this game feels more puzzle than survival horror, in my opinion. Now, basic progression is about exploring areas and solving puzzles, but in a very non-linear fashion. When you reach the base hub of the world of Infernium, you have several different paths you can take that lead you to different areas and different dungeons. While you do have to visit all of them eventually to get all of the items you need to get to the end of the game, it's very much like a 3D Metroidvania in that you can choose your own path and you're not forced to do one or the other. If one path you really hate the puzzles for, you can just take the other path, and by the time you get all the items in the other path, going through the path you don't like will be significantly easier. As I said a moment ago, this is a very puzzle-heavy game. Navigating areas isn't always just a matter of walking through the door to the next area while avoiding enemies. It's a matter of solving puzzles, pulling levers, and using the in-game teleport mechanic to be able to navigate all of these timed puzzles. There will be a lot of doors that will close faster than you can reach them, requiring you to pull the lever, run to the door, and at the very last moment, teleport through the gap before the door shuts you out. Now this sounds pretty simple, but enemies make it not so simple. There are enemies guarding a lot of areas, and there will almost always be an enemy guarding a path that you have to take, making this not just a stealth game of sneaking past enemies, but actually making enemies chase you, finding a path to create some distance between you and them, and running into those areas, solving puzzles on the fly as they're still chasing you, trying to get to the next path before they touch you and instantly kill you. Of course, if you die, it's not an instant game over. You have 25 lives and every time you die you're just sent to a purgatory area where you can just walk towards a fountain and respawn at your last save checkpoint. But if you lose all 25 of your lives, you're going to have to use some of the light orbs that you collect around the game to open doors to regain those lives. So you never have a true game over, just so you know you can go around and collect light to restore your lives as well as managing that light for doors that you have to unlock as you progress through the game. Now before closing this section out, let's talk about the scare factor. When I played the first several areas of this game, I never really felt scared. Most of the areas of the game are very well lit, 
and enemies are in plain sight. The only tension that happens is when you walk towards one of these robed enemies and they're following you as you walk around trying to solve a puzzle. But that's not to say the game isn't scary. When I was being chased by these floating beach towel robes, I wasn't really ever scared. But when I got later in the game and I saw this, invisible enemies that can only be seen in the rain, that you have to lead into buildings where they become 100% invisible, that was terrifying and nerve wracking. So a lot of the enemies in the game don't really cause a lot of scares, but one particular enemy definitely does. And now let's talk about content and length. Infernium costs around $20, so how long are you going to be spending on the game? If you don't use a guide, you're going to be spending a very long time in the game. When I first played the game and learned the game and was exploring around until I got down to the cave area, I'd spent over three hours of game time. After I learned a lot about the game and restarted the game, by the time I got to that same cave area, I'd spent only around 25 minutes. So if you use a guide or you're someone who pretty much knows the game inside and out, you can probably clear the entire game in about three to five hours. But your first run, if you're not using a guide, and maybe even if you are using a guide for some of the more difficult puzzles, I would say that you will be spending at least 10 to 15 hours before you get to the end of the game. Now let's get into presentation. Visually, the game looks pretty good. There is a very small blur effect for faraway objects. I noticed this a little bit when I first started playing the game, but as I was moving around, I noticed it less and less. The real problem with presentation is the way the game performs. Loading sequences are pretty nice. They're not really any longer than they, than they are on the PC version, but frame rate likes to dip down under 30 frames per second a lot. Most of the game when you're wandering around, it stays around 30 frames per second, but frequently when exploring new areas, I saw it jump down into the 20s. Now it never jumps down into a really terrible range, but considering this is an action game and a very tense action game when you're being chased by enemies that can one hit KO you, it's a bit of a nuisance. Now, battery life. Infernium surprised me. An Unreal Engine game that looks really nice in terms of detail, I didn't expect to get much battery life out of it. In fact, we get a lot. Here are my battery times from 100% to 0%. Maximum brightness with the Wi-Fi on, 3 hours and 24 minutes. Maximum brightness with the Wi-Fi off, 3 hours and 39 minutes. Lower brightness with the Wi-Fi on, 4 hours and 26 minutes. Lower brightness with the Wi-Fi off, 4 hours and 43 minutes. This really surprised me. A 3D exploration game using Unreal Engine and you can get almost 5 hours out of it. That's really good. Now in conclusion, Infernium is a horror game that I went in expecting survival horror but got puzzle horror. Despite some mild frame rate issues, it stands as a very unique horror game with a lore system that had me constantly coming back and wanting to know more and more if you're into horror games and don't mind doing puzzles here and there. You should definitely check it out. Reviews to Go rates Infernium for the Nintendo Switch an 8.5 out of 10. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave them below or head to the website at www.reviewstogo.com.